Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in the last couple of lectures of ECE 3084 Signals and Systems, we looked at proportional integral controllers and proportional derivative controllers. And in this lecture, we'll put everything together and have controllers that include proportional, integral, and derivative terms. So to remind ourselves of the usual structure, we assume there's a plant modeled by a linear time invariant system with a system function GP, and that this plant is being fed some input that we're calling XT, and it produces an output that we're calling YT. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the output and feed it back. And in particular, we're going to be using negative feedback so in my feedback summing node here, I'm going to put a little sign there. And so the feedback is being added to the reference signal, which is what we would like the output to match. So the reference signal minus the feedback is fed to a system that we create called the controller. So that has a system function GC, and that result is now fed to the plant. So the signal here, this difference between the reference and the output, that has a particular name. We call that the error function. So that's the reference minus the feedback signal. So in this lecture, we're going to let GPS equal little k over s squared plus omega naught squared. So this is not like any sort of plant we've looked at before. This plant is not a stable system. Now, it's not an uber-unstable system. It doesn't have poles on the right-hand side, but it does have a couple of poles sitting on the imaginary axis. So whatever input you're giving this, you're going to get some resonance at omega naught popping out. Remember, this is going to have an impulse response that looks like a sinusoid. All right. So to fully control this, we'll see that we're going to need a controller that includes a proportional term and an integral term. So I'll write capital K over S and also has a derivative term. So I'll write KDS. Now, it turns out it's convenient to write this whole thing as being stuff over S. So what I'll do is I'll write KDS squared plus KPS plus KI. So according to Black's formula, our closed loop transfer function is the controller transfer function times the transfer function for the plant all over one plus the same thing. So let's see, let me draw a big line here, and I'll have one plus. Let me squoosh a copy of this here, and I'll squoosh another copy of it down here. Dot, dot, and I'll squoosh a copy of this down here, and squoosh another copy of it down here. Okay, so you know the drill by now. We need to clear these fractions. So I'll write K times KDS squared plus KPS plus KI in the numerator. And in the denominator, we'll have S cubed plus omega naught squared S plus, actually, let me redraw that S a bit. It looks too much like the P next to it. Okay, something like that. You know what? I don't like these either. These S's should be more prominent in their appearance. Let's make this be an S. Make this be a big S. I mean, not capital, but bigger than the subscript. Same thing here. You should be beefier. Okay, there we go. I like that better. Okay, so this whole thing is equal this stuff. And let's see, what about the denominator? Okay, so I have S cubed. And for the S squared terms, I have little k, capital KD. Okay, this might not have been a good choice of notation on my part, times S squared. For the S term, I'll have little k, big K, P, plus omega naught squared. And then for the constant term, I'll have little k, capital KI. Okay, so the first thing I would like to point out is that 
I have three poles and I have three knobs. So I have three parameters here that I can use to put these poles where I want. So that's a useful thing. The other thing I would like to observe is that if we want to think about the tracking of the system, well, I personally like to think about this from a frequency response viewpoint. So if we imagined taking this HCL, oh, you know, I really should have put an S here, and plugging in J omega for S and then plugging in zero for omega to get the DC response. Well, if I plug in J zero for S, then all of these terms here go away. Oh, I also need an S here. Okay, there we go. Anyway, I'm left with just K, capital KI, over little k, capital KI, which is equal to one. So this means that the system can track a unit step. All right, so that's a useful thing. Let's do a particular example of pole placement. Here, I'm gonna change notation a little bit and write the transfer function as big H, P, I, D, S. And the reason I'm doing that is we'll look at some subcases of this where we will look at PI, PD, and P controllers by setting some of the terms here equal to zero. Anyway, suppose that the original plant function was one over S squared plus nine. So in that case, omega naught squared is equal to nine. And suppose I wanted to place the poles so that one of them was at minus 10 and the other two were at minus four along the real axis here. Okay, then what I would wanna do is I would wanna take my denominator and match it up with s plus four squared times s plus 10. Okay, so slogging through this, I'll have s squared plus eight s plus 16. This is all times s plus 10. Okay, so I have s cubed plus eight s squared plus 16 s, and then I would have 10 s squared plus 80 s plus 160. And adding these all up, I have s cubed plus 18 s squared plus 96 s plus 160. And now to pick k, p, k, d, and k, i, I need to match up the various terms. So the little k here is equal to one. So I can match up k, d with 18, that's here. I can match up k, i with 160, that's the constant term. And let's see, I wanna match up 96 here with the k, p, plus omega naught squared, which is nine. So KP is gonna equal 87. So that's not really a practical design example, that's just an example. Now you may be thinking, did we really need to go to full on PID control? Well, let's look at some simpler cases here. What about PD control? So for PD control, I would basically be getting rid of the I terms here. And when I do that, we see that there's an S that we could factor out of everything in the numerator and the denominator that would cancel. So this would give me little k, kds plus kp all over s squared plus little k, kds plus, and now my constant term is gonna be this little k, capital KP plus omega naught squared. Okay, so now I have two poles and I have two knobs. So I should be able to put the poles where I want more or less. So let's suppose I wanted to put both poles at minus four. So let's see, matching up S squared plus eight S plus 16, then I would say that KD is equal to eight and KP plus omega naught squared, which is nine is equal to 16. So KP should equal seven. But now let's think about how it tracks. So if I were to plug in J zero for S here, I wind up with little k KP over little k capital KP. Oh, this was such a bad choice of notation on my part, plus omega naught squared. So this is gonna be something less than one. So this can't track a unit step function nicely. 
Now, let's see how bad it happens to be in this particular example. Well, KP is 7, and then KP is 7, and then I add 9 for my omega naught. So that's 7 over 15. So that is really not good. You put 1 in, and you get something substantially less than 1 out. So that motivates going for PID control. Okay, so that was PD control. You may ask yourself, well, what about PI control? So for PI control, we would get rid of the D terms, and then we would wind up with little k, cap KD, S squared plus KI in the numerator, and S cubed plus K, big KP plus omega naught squared, S plus K, capital KI. All right. The main problem here is notice that we have three poles, but we have only two knobs with which to place them. And that might not necessarily be awful if we could at least put the poles on the left-hand side of the complex plane. But it turns out that the fact that we're missing a S squared term means that not all of the poles are on the left-hand side. If I remember right, I think a couple of them actually have to wind up on the imaginary axis, something like that. If anyone knows, leave a comment below. Anyway, the details about this are beyond the scope of this class. You could take this on faith. So this doesn't even stabilize the system. Okay, so to round out the discussion, what about proportional control? So we kill this term, this term, this term, and this term. Okay, so I would have k kps all over s cubed plus this little k kp plus omega naught squared s. And of course, this s cancels this s, and I wind up with a 2 up here. So I wind up with little k big kp all over s squared plus k big kp plus omega naught squared. So I still wind up with a resonant system. We had a system with an impulse response that's a sine wave, and the closed loop impulse response is also a sine wave. If I look at this term here, okay, I take omega naught squared, and then I add a term to it. So by changing kp, all I can really do here is take the original poles of the system and shove them outward along the imaginary axis. And that's not terribly useful.